Hey guys, my name is Nick, and welcome to my channel where I cover all things entertainment. Whatever you're watching, I'm making videos about. And on Saturdays, or Sundays, or whenever this ends up, I like to take a look at my favorite streaming service, Shudder, and find a solid horror movie recommendation for you guys. And this week, I'm really excited to talk about one of my favorite slashers that I would say is underrated, but... I think at this point it is well regarded as one of the best horror movies of the 2000s, and that of course is Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. This mockumentary horror comedy follows a film crew documenting an up-and-coming serial killer looking to join the ranks of Michael, Freddy, and Jason. They go over all the tropes of the genre as Leslie lays out his own urban legend, the way he stalks his victims, and his plan to murder a group of teens. Like all the best slashers. The boy murdered Silas, buried his body in the field, and dragged Molly from the house, hanging her in the farm's apple orchard. Behind the Mask fully deserves to be classified among the greats like Scream and The Cabin in the Woods, horror comedies that comment on the genre, but also create their own greatness in the process. I think the greatest complaint one could find with this movie is that it's almost too inside the game of the slasher movie, and I understand that, but I have to say as a slasher fan, I feel like the knowledge only enhances the movie, and because it makes fun of itself so often, it's also accessible to non-horror fans. While the film has all of the surface level fun, at the core is a relationship between creator and subject. Taylor Gentry is the lead of the film who tries to not only display Leslie's actions, but also understand them. And I really like her arc in this movie because she starts out quite disassociated from the horrors to come, as if she thinks it's all one big joke. But as things turn deadly serious, she's the one that stops the show in an action that shifts the style of the film from mockumentary to a typical narrative feature, a strong move that I appreciate. So often in movies, especially in horror movies, we see these media figure characters who are so driven by their own greed that it leads to their comeuppance. But Taylor is a fully formed character who takes charge and fully directs the course of this film. Plus, she's just one of the best horror movie heroines we've really ever had, and I would say one of the most underrated. From Ellen Ripley to Nancy Thompson, Taylor Gentry is a name you should remember. Everybody thinks we just wake up one morning and start obsessing about a girl and start stalking her, killing everybody that gets in the way. That does seem to happen a lot with you guys. <laughs> Leslie Vernon is equally one of the more interesting villains that we've gotten. By making him a humorous character, we do fully go behind the mask and see that this character is a person as well as a killer. The devilish yet removed nature of the character makes him charming in a sick kind of way, but that's so important because when he goes full slasher, we as audience members have to deal with the fact that he really is a villain. He isn't some scraggle-toothed crazy loser, he's the guy you want to have a beer with. It's a bummer he didn't actually become the next great slasher because I think this movie really does everything right. I could see it coming off as trying too hard, but I really do think this movie earnestly joins the ranks of the best. And it might be too late for Leslie Vernon, but I could still use an entire franchise of this. You have no idea. How much cardio I have to do. It's ridiculous. There's that whole thing of making it look like you're walking. <laughs> everybody else is running their ass off. What makes this so great, especially as a rewatch, is just how tight this movie is. It's very efficiently structured, not a scene is wasted, and they even go the extra mile to blend the tropes of both Halloween and Friday the 13th to create the ultimate slasher. This leads me to maybe my greatest concern with the movie, and that's the third act. And now listen, I love this movie through and through, but while rewatching it and trying to look at it with a critical eye, I can see how some people would be disappointed by the fact that it does play into the tropes and go full slasher in the end. I love that, but I can see the opposite viewpoint. But what makes me appreciate the way that this movie plays out is that it starts out with our main characters covering the locations of Halloween, A Nightmare on Elm Street, and Friday the 13th. Right off the bat, it distinguishes itself as a mockumentary and not found footage. It's not trying to feel real. This movie actually takes place within the world where all of these other movies are real. It's a movie within the world of movies. And for that alone, I think that it allows Behind the Mask to just have a lot of fun. 
At first, when I logged my grade on Letterboxd, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5, but I had to go back and change it because I realized I love this movie a lot more than that. I think it works great as a horror film and a comedy, and I just appreciate it as an independent film. I think it's great what they were able to accomplish with little money and a lot of horror love. I'm going to give Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon a 4.5 out of 5. The low budget does show off some small faults, and there is laughably bad acting at times, but overall, this is one of my favorite horror movie gems that I will cherish forever. What did you guys think of Behind the Mask? Let me know in the comments below, and let me know what you're watching on Shudder. Uh, sorry this is a little bit late. Normally I post these on Saturdays, but... I doubt anyone cares anyway. Thank you so much for watching this video. Feel free to follow me on Instagram. That is it for this video, but I won't stop you from watching another.